नमस्कार आई एड लाइक टू विश एवरी वन अ वेरी हैप्पी इंडिपेन्डेंस डे ऑन दिस ऑस्पिशियस डे वी बिगिन आवर सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द स्वाध्याय प्रोग्राम स्वाध्याय वन पॉइंट टू आर कारिकुलम फॉर दिस प्रोग्राम विल बी क्वेश्चन टोपोलॉजी एंड आर रिसोर्स पर्सन इज डॉक्टर सचिदानंद प्रसाद डॉक्टर सचिदानंद प्रसाद हैज बीन एन एक्टिव मेम्बर at mtts as well as curry leaf a math club for mtts alumni for the past few years he has mentored mtts level o level 1 and level 2 camps along with being a mentor at mtts ofcm camp we are really lucky and honored to have him here as a resource person dr sachidanand prasad completed his integrated msc phd from nit raoulkela with the best msc award and the gold medal he later on got the nbhm msc fellowship and continued his phd at indian institute of science education and research popularly known as iser in kolkata currently he is a post doctoral fellow at international center for theoretical sciences in bangalore question topology has always been a very intriguing and this topic of research in topology this topology deals with the construction of new topological spaces from old as a student myself i has i have always been intrigued by the rigorous mathematical processes that were described in the elementary books in our elementary level 3d geometry we were taught how a straight line can be folded into a circle how a triangle can be folded into a right triangular cone how a rectangle can be folded into a cylinder but as we grow up and we are at a stage now in topology we know that every such things require a mathematical rigor question topology answers our questions and provides the mathematical rigor to help construct the new spaces from the old I believe this session will be a very informative session for both you as well as me because I also have a very little idea about this. I am really honored to have Dr. Sachidanand Prasad as a resource person because he is currently working in a related field and would be able to explain us the gist behind the idea of question topology. I thank the speaker once again. and begin our program for today thank you yeah yeah okay so like as rito prabhu already told ki like how to construct a new topological spaces from old topological spaces so this is a tool and a very important tool to construct new topological spaces out of old topological spaces so before going to this since uh, some of you are from level 1 so i'll just quickly recap uh, what is topology so if you have a set x okay and then and what how do i define a topology on that so so i'll say t so it is the collection of subsets of x okay and now when do i say that this is a topology so if it is satisfy some property so first one is that the empty set and x both should belongs to this tau second thing if you have a collection of some sets for example if u alpha belongs to tau for alpha belongs to some index a then union of u alpha must belongs to tau and the third that we say so this is called arbitrary intersection because we are arbitrary union because you are taking union over any index a so this we say uh, arbitrary union so we are saying that arbitrary union of of uh, collect arbitrary union of sets should also be in the tau and then the third is says that the finite intersection so if you have ui 
from i equals to 1 to n, then the intersections of ui will also be in tau. So this says that the finite intersection of sets is also in tau and the sets of tau is called open set. So we call the element of tau to be open set. Okay. So it contains empty set and the whole set. So if uh, an arbitrary collection of open sets are there, then their union is again open and finite intersections of open sets is again an open set. So these are the three things we need to check for a topological space. So then in that case, we say that X and tau be a topological space. Okay. Yeah. So see, uh, so I'll start with a couple of examples with uh, pictures mainly, and then we'll go into a formal definition of what a quotient topology is. So these examples you must have seen, even you have not seen, you may realize that these are very really natural. So for example, let's see, uh, 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 like let's see a finite line segment. So here I have taken a line segment. You can say it's like, let's say zero and one, the closed interval zero and one. Okay. So these are the two points. This is my zero and this is my one. Now what I will do, so as I told, quotient topology is what? It is a tool to construct new spaces. So let's say we, let's say we are not talking about topology, we want to just construct new spaces out of old. So one thing I can do here is like, I will just glue these two endpoints to one point. Okay. So I'll just keep this. And uh, like, if it, if it is just a wire, I'll just uh, bend the wire so that uh, I can glue the end two points. What will happen? I'll make a circle. So it's like this. And these two points, becomes this point. So in this, I am having this point and this point get in this new picture is so if this is my P1 or we know that this is zero and this is one. So in this new picture, this is are same. So zero and one are same. So what exactly we are doing, we are just the two points, we are making it one point. So in other way, this is what we are saying that if I define, so each of the point, other point, let's say if I'll consider this point. So this point is something like here, and this point is something here, and let's say this point is this point, and now this point is this point. So each, uh, like other than zero one, every point represents one point. So this representing this, this represents this, and these two are representing these two. So we can say here, we can define a relation here on this set. So, so my X is equals to closed interval zero one. Okay, and what I'm defining is like, I'm just gluing zero with one and rest of the points I'm keeping at fixed. Okay, and the thing that I'm getting is a circle. Okay, but when I'm telling that I'm getting a circle, so that's like intuitive way of saying that, yes, if I bend a wire and uh, fix it at one point, I'll get a circle. But later on, I'll see ki why this is a circle or in the topological sense, why this space is same as circle or homeomorphic to circle. So we'll see this terminology soon. Hello, Satyanand Maya. Sorry yeah. for interruption. I mean, uh, why, uh, while you are using your hands to say something, you may face to this camera so that... Uh, we oh, can okay, okay. Visually see and, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. And yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, lift your hand upward so that it's visible in the camera. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So this... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah, so let's see. So here, basically what I'm seeing, so this is a, this is 
in the previous example what we saw that we take an interval and the end points we are gluing or so these are basically the boundary points of this set so these are called, these are so these are just like uh, non mathematical terms uh, let's say we are just boundary points we are saying as the end points here okay so so we are gluing these two boundary points okay okay now i want to generalize this in a more general sense so for example this is what this is if i'll write it as set this is what this is set of all real numbers such that the absolute value is less than equals to or zero not absolute value also let me write absolute value less than equals to 1 and let me write minus 1 to 1 okay so this is the same construction that we did there we take 0 1 and now we are taking minus 1 to 1 okay now instead of taking a point in r what if if i take let's say x y in r2 such that x square plus y square is less than equals to 1 so what is this this is a disk okay and again what is the boundary the boundary is basically the circle so what i will do i'll i'll glue whole boundary to one point to see what it happens so i have this this with this is my boundary which i'll write s1 which is circle okay so do you have any guess like if i'll glue the whole uh, circle at one point so just think that this is made of with some rubber sheet and i am just so that i can just deform the space so if i'll just do this whole boundary to one point what will i be getting so any guess so you can unmute and say sphere yeah so sphere okay yes this is right so this is kind of in the previous example we got circle and now we are hoping to get a sphere and indeed this is the thing so if i have this so like just i'm just trying to bend this so i got this and just try to cover it up what you will be getting will be getting a sphere so and this point this point represents this boundary so this boundary become one point so i can say that in and 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 let's say this point and let's say this point is again somewhere here and some other point is somewhere here so other points are going to are, are, are to be fixed and the only thing that is changing is the boundary okay so here i can say that if x is my disk so i'll writing disk with d2 So this is basically my two disks. That means x y in R two such that x square plus y square is less than equals to one. Okay, and s one is equals to the circle. So x y in R two such that x square plus y square equals to one. Okay. So what I am doing so. if this is my let's say north pole n so what i am doing i am sending s1 to the north pole okay and rest of the point so d2 minus s1 are fixed okay so this is what i am doing in the previous example what we did so if that is if if that if that interval i write d1 so So my d one, so there I'll send minus one and one to some point on the circle, and this we are fixed. Okay, so this is what we did in the previous example, and in this example we are doing right now this. So what we are expecting that if we consider a general disk d n, which is x y. dot 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 in rn so x1 to xn in rn such that there is square sum is less than equals to 1 and if i do the boundary 
that is my sn minus 1 and if i glue the whole boundary to one point so i should get sn okay this is like our intuition okay yeah let's see some more examples to build more intuitions yeah so now again we started with our line segment now instead of gluing the two end points this time what i will do i'll glue the we have two parts one is yellow and one is green what i will do i'll keep the two ends of the green uh, yellow part and glue them to make a circle and then with the gluing point i'll again glue to the uh, this green part so these two at first i'll glue this two to make a circle so i am getting like this and after that what i'll do i'll glue the last point to this to get one more circle so this is what this is the union of two circles which is joined at one point okay okay now then the question is like can we so you see here we are doing with three points what if if we increase the points what will we getting so for example if i have let's say a line segment and now we divide in a bunch of points so for example i have this point this point this point many points okay and now what i will do i'll do the same construction what we did in the last example so what i'll be getting any guesses here what i'll be getting something like a flower yes so a bouquet of circle so like this okay so i am getting this so this will give me this after that i'll be getting this so at this then this then this one oh, sorry this color won't be there so this color should be changed okay oh no right yeah so this one is this and this one is this so i'll be getting a bouquet of circle okay so this is again a some beautiful space so in all the examples till now we have discussed what we are observing that given some space with some operations that we are telling gluing okay i am getting a different object a totally a different object so we want to understand this totally different object in terms of the object that we know so for example in first example we want to understand the circle in terms of the line segment or the sphere in terms of the disc or this bouquet of circles in terms of the line segment again yeah now some more uh, example so this example will be in general something else so now what i will do i again keep a circle and this time i'll glue the two like opposite points so i'll i'll fix a point this draw a diameter and wherever it cuts to the circle i'll take that point and glue this point so what i'll be getting if i glue these two points so if i'll glue these two point what i'll be getting similar to what yeah. we get yeah yeah so it's like this it's like this okay but we are not stopping at here we are gluing all such points so you take any point here and draw a diameter and glue this two again take this point draw this uh, glue this so in similar manner we are doing this okay like this so in other way it's like this so we are taking all the points on the circle and gluing to the other points so it means that if if this part the green part glues to the green part and this yellow part glues to this yellow part or in other words so in this green part see this side of this green will glue to the other side of the green because we are considering the diametrically opposite point this part of yellow will go to the other part of the yellow and this continues 
So what you will be getting? Any guesses for this? Yeah, make some guesses. The guess might be wrong. Is it a single point? Okay, so it's a single point. Anybody else? Sorry? Bookie of circles. Bookie of circles. Okay. It's right there. Okay. Anything else? So, so surprisingly, this is again a circle. Okay, so we'll see a generalization of this example in any sphere SN. If you do the, all the antipodal points, there is something called, we'll learn what is that, which is called projective space. So we'll learn this. I drew for circle because for circle it remains the circle or it is the projective space, but that is circle. So, so you can, you can just see this. Just try to visualize for the circle and try to see why we will be getting the circle. So this is one of your uh, discussion. Okay, so this you can try to discuss among yourself that why this will give me again a circle. Okay, informally of course. The formal thing we will discuss and then we will try to prove that why this is indeed a circle. Uh, okay. Sir, could you yeah. please repeat uh, what the gluing here was again? I'm sorry, I think I missed that part. Okay, so gluing is basically we are taking a circle, take any point P, okay, and just glue with minus P. So if this is my one, 0, 1, then this will be my 0 and minus 1. If this is my 1, 0, this is my 0 and sorry, minus 1 and 0. So this is a formal gluing. So you take any point, just draw a diameter passing through that line and glue that two points. So this is the gluing. And in more formal sense, any point P is glued to minus P. So this is called antipodal point. So these are called antipodal points. <laughs> so what we are doing? So here my x is s1 okay and any p is glued to minus p so no point is fixed here every point is going to some other point okay so and the space that we'll be getting is again a circle okay but as i told in general, this is not, if I do the same thing with higher spheres, this is not sphere. Okay. This is something called a projective space. Okay. So we'll see. So yeah, this is your first discussion. Try to see why this will give you a circle. Okay. Yeah. Let's see a very familiar example. So you take a sheet of paper. So for example, you can see the paper okay now with this paper i will do some gluing okay so first is this that what i will do i just glue the opposite ends this so i, I have this paper i'll do this i'll glue the two ends okay so what i'll be getting is so i'll glue these two yellow parts in this picture and what i'll be getting i'll be getting a cylinder so something like this okay now, what if, so I got a cylinder and these two yellow lines become this, this is the joining line, okay? And this, the top, the top line and the bottom line becomes circle. So, so for example, in this, this, this line, if you glue, 
is becoming a circle and why so because this this red point here is glued to this red point so on the top we are having this this identification or this gluing on the bottom we are having again the same gluing and in the earlier picture we saw that this type of gluing gives you a circle so that's why on the top we are having a circle and in the down also we are having the circle okay and this field area become curved which is giving me a cylinder okay so this is clear now we'll continue the folding now what i will do i'll just have these two circles so again to think of that this is made with rubber sheet so that i can fold and do everything what i'll do i'll just drag the upper part and do it like this so i'll do like this okay so what i'll be getting i'm getting a tube okay so it's same as the the bicycle tube that you have seen if you cut it from the middle you'll be getting a cylinder if you make one more cut you'll be getting a flat rectangle okay so this is what i'll be getting so this is called torus okay so in the so here basically i am doing two step identification or two step gluing the first step so if my x is let's say 0 1 and cross 0 1 so what i am doing i am gluing this line with this line so i'll say left line with the right line okay this is the first step to get a cylinder and the second step is this is my c1 and c2 the second step is c1 glued with c2 to get a torus okay okay but see instead of gluing like this instead of gluing like this we could have glued in 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 a different fashion so for example what i'll do instead of like this i'll not do like this i'll go here till here but what i'll do i'll give you a twist here so i'll just instead of gluing this this part i'll just do this part so what i'll be getting is something like this so is everybody can like can everybody see this then yes yeah so what so how i made this so i take a piece of paper so if i glue along this i'll be getting a cylinder if i glue along some i'll go like this and give a other end so this part i'll with the other end so i'll be getting a different structure okay and that is that we called as a mobius strip so let's i've not drawn it so i'll just write it this is mobius so there are, there are lots of thing can be done with the mobius strip so what you you can try so you can try this so first of all of course make mobius bands or strip with papers you can use the uh, let's say you if you if just just paint one side of the paper so this paper has two sides one this side and one on the back side so just like just give the other side let's say a different color okay so you have two sides red and white let's say okay now try to see now on the mobius strip what you do you just fix a point at here just fix a point and just go along the surface so you just fix a point and mark it with a pen and just go along and see what can you cover the whole can you cover the both side of this strip or not okay so this is again your like kind of an activity that you can try so if you have a mobius strip then like just draw it uh, draw a uh, uh, path okay and see 
Like for example, on the cylinder, if I if I like uh, keep my pen here, and if I want to draw, like I'll just cover one side. I I, I may not I I will not able to cover the the interior of this cylinder. Okay, so can you do the same thing and see whether you can draw the uh, whether you can cover the interior as well as the exterior of this tray? Okay, so and see if. You can cover the both sides. Okay. Now, see, now we can do the same thing with the cylinder. So you got, once you got the cylinder, so I'll go to the previous thing. So once you got the cylinder, instead of like what I'll do, I'll, I'll have a cylinder. So instead of gluing like this, what I'll do, I'll again twist it and glue it. So those things also we'll see in detail. So that is something called Klein bottle. So yeah, just for the curiosity, I'm, this thing we'll see later on. So what I'm doing, so I'm, like, if this is this way, so I'm drawing this, this way. Okay, so it means that one circle and the other circle, I'll just glue in a different way. Okay, then this will give me the Klein bottle. So you see that there are a lot of new pictures we are getting from, just for example, these all three we got from the a rectangular seat. Okay, and uh, uh, a circle and bouquet of circle we get just from a line, okay, or a line segment. So, and now let's consider one more example. So you take a triangle, and just glue the these two end, these two sides of this triangle. Okay, so what you will be getting? Any guess? So if I glue these two sides of this triangle, what I'll be getting? Sorry? A cone. A cone, right. So I'll be getting something like this. Okay, so from this, I'll be getting a own kind of thing. So this is again a new space. Okay. So yeah. So these examples like give us a motivation that with this gluing idea, so we have to, so in order to make it concrete, we have to say what is the meaning of gluing? Like what is the meaning of this mathematically? What do I mean by gluing? Okay. Like in the first example, we are gluing two points, then the whole circle, then in a bunch of other examples, we are gluing something. So what do I mean by gluing mathematically? Okay. Okay. So let's see. So instead of going directly to the definitions and topology, let's revisit this uh, sphere, uh, this example, the disk to a sphere example. Okay. And then we'll try to discuss through this example and we'll try and then you will Help me to formalize the definitions and the properties of the quotient topology. Okay. So, so here we have two things. One is the disk and one with the disk with something. So I'll write with, let's say, let's write with some disk tilde. So this is what disk with glue. Okay, so the this thing is the left part is the disc and the other part is disc with gluing. And what we want to show that this is same as we want to show that this is same as sphere. Okay, that's our target. So now you see that in topology, when do you say that two spaces are same? So when we are saying that two spaces are same, so I am talking about something called homeomorphism. Okay. So I'm talking about homeomorphism. So let's see. So just recall what is homeomorphism. Okay. So if you have two spaces X and Y, okay, we say that X is homeomorphic to Y if you have a continuous map F and 
a continuous map G. So from X to Y, you have a map. And from Y to X, you have a continuous map. And just to recall, what is continuous map in topology? So we say that F is continuous if for every U, so let's write this is my tau Y and this is my tau X. So for every U in tau Y, so take any open set in Y, F inverse U should belong to tau X. Okay, so this is the meaning of the continuity that F is continuous. If you take any open set in Y, take the pre image of that open set, what you will be getting that's again open in X. So then we say that F is continuous. Now, now homeomorphism means what? If I am getting two functions, one from X to Y and one from Y to X, such that F compose G is my identity on Y and G compose F is identity on X. So if I am having this, then I say that the space X and Y are homeomorphic. So here in this example, we want to show that this disk with gluing, I don't know what the topology is. So of course this homeomorphism will make sense only if we have some topology on the space. So first, so our goal, so first goal is what topology, topology we should give on this disk. Okay, that is our first question. Okay, then the second is that under that topology, whether the space, the D2 tilde is same as the sphere or whether it's homeomorphic to a sphere or not. So that is our question. Okay. So one thing here, so let me, so can you give me a map from, so a set theoretic map from, let's say, let, let's say with the circle example. So can you give me a map from this to this? We don't, since we don't know what our topology is, so can, like, I just want a map, a set theoretic map. So this is my zero one, and this is my zero one. So can you give me a map? Just a set theoretic map. So this point is this. And this one. Yeah, just point wise map. Can you give me? So let's say, so this is my circle. So this point is, let's say, zero, one. Yeah. So where does pi of zero, what is the image of zero under pi? No, uh, there were lots of noise, so I could not hear what you told. So from the picture, can you say, see the picture? Uh, can I give you one map? Yes, yes, sure. So cos 2 pi omega, uh, sine 2 pi omega. I mean, pi of omega is cos 2 pi omega. Comma sine no, but see, we don't know whether this is a circle, because what you are giving is like that is a circle, but this we don't know. See, this we don't know what is this. This we don't know whether this is a circle or not. So that's why we have one, one thing is this, one thing is this, and other thing is this, that I don't know what is that, that may be circle, it, it looks like a circle, like what you are telling cosine 2 pi sine 2 pi, that's circle, that will go to the circle, but I don't know whether it will go to here or not. So let, let's not make it 0, 1, let's make it some point of star, some point of star, let's say, yeah. So, uh, so just to confirm, uh, the object that you have drawn on the right side, we should treat it just as zero one tilde, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's a zero one tilde. So, so I have to give point-wise maps. 
Yes. So then the map I would think of is x going to its equivalence class. We don't know like, what is the, we haven't defined any relation now, no. So because we don't know, like we have just glued it. So we haven't, as I told, we haven't formalized the thing as an equivalence class or an equivalence relation. So just with pictures, that I, that's why I have color coded it. Just see the color coding, and whatever you told will make sense. Of course, that's right. But like since we haven't defined the equivalence classes or equivalence relation till now, so the answer does not make sense right now. Uh, will this work? Like pi of zero is one. Pi of what one is zero. one? So I am treating it. Uh, I was defining a map from close interval zero one to close interval zero one. So zero will go to one. And everything other will go to itself. So this is a yeah, but uh, right side is not zero one. See, right hand side is something. This object. Oh. Okay. So can you can see the color of... coding? Can you give me a map in terms of the color? Sir, yeah. Ex yeah. Uh, uh, can we think of the map to be uh, pi of? X is equal to t x plus one minus t of x. But uh, where does the t x plus one minus t x will go? So whatever you are uh, telling, t x. Uh, where t is, uh, uh, t is from zero to one. No, that's right. But like, uh, where does this go? I don't know what. Is. See, the main thing is that I don't know what is the object in the right hand side. Okay. The okay. right hand side can be very weird object. It seems like that's a circle, but we don't know yet that it's indeed a circle. So that's why I'm asking you that give me, see that point I have mentioned, this point, I have named it as star. Okay, the name of that point is star. This is some weird object and the point is star. So I have, that's why I have color coded it. So can you give me the map in terms of the color? So yeah. zero and one will go to a star, and the green part will map to the green part. Right. So zero will map to star. One will map to star. So this zero and one will map to star. Pi one will again be star, and the rest of the green part. So any x will remain. So I, this green part will just be fixed. Okay. So x will be just. Fixed. Sir, but what do you mean by fixed here? Yeah, fix means like I am not changing those points. I'm just, see, I'm just, I have one point a star here. Okay. And here I am having zero one. And this is my zero and this is one. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm saying, this is a set theoretic map. I don't bother about like, what is that? Okay. So let's say the, what I'm, I'm, I'm sending zero to this, one to this, and the other point to be, so right hand side, I can say star, Union open zero one. I can just say this right hand side of this. What I'll do, I'll send zero to this, one to this, and the other point any x to this. So if 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 x is in this open interval, I'll just send that to the same point, and any other point like the zero will be going to that star point, and one will go to the star point. For example, in the in this example, so in this example, I'll send the any point on this boundary, any point on this boundary, to this star point, and rest of the point I'll, I'll I'll not move it. I'll just fix it. So, so I'll just so let me so if if my d two is there, then I can write this the other point. I'll write see this thing or let me write as sorry. Yeah, let me erase it and write it in a, yeah, yes. So I can write this as zero one. I can write this as what? Open zero one, union zero one, okay? I, I'll just send these two points to a fixed point star and this to be the, whatever the point it will be. This is just a set theoretic map. So I don't know what this, this thing will be. Okay. But in anything, whatever the gluing we have learned, 
for example in the disk also the disk also i can write disk as the the open disk which i let's say write this union s1 and i'll just send to star union the disk open i'll just send this to so any point on the circle i'll send to this star point and any point on the disk i'll send to itself so that's like a, just a map okay this is just a map i don't because i don't know what the topology is what is the structure on the right hand side so i don't know whether it's what is the meaning of continuity and all for the time being okay but now see the first uh, comment that we got it's something equivalence relation that we got remember that we got something called equivalence relation so now let's try to formalize this to an equivalence thing okay so in this disk example only we'll formalize this okay so yeah so i I'll, I'll, i'll have my disk okay and i have my disk tilde okay now what i am telling like what i am doing all points on on the circle i am sending to one point so i am defining a relation here so any point x y will related to star so here i know what star is okay so that's a star if x square plus y square is 1 and it will be related to itself if x square plus y square is less than 1 that is what we are doing precisely whole the boundary we are sending to one point so that that's basically this the whole boundary we are gluing to one point so if i if i'll see as a relation i don't know whether this will be an equivalence relation or not but if i'll see as a relation so the whole boundary i am sending to one point and the interior i am sending to this so so this means that or you can just define let's say you can just keep this a star as let's say some point let's say 10 10 is also there so i i am just keeping at 10 let's say or some point so i, I have kept it 10 so i am defining a relation i am defining a relation on the disk as xy either maps to 10 10 or xy is related to xy itself okay if either of these two satisfied yeah so what do you think is this an equivalence relation is this an equivalence relation so you mean x y is related to 1,0 if x square plus y square is 1 and yes yes x comma y is related to x comma y if x square plus y square is less than 1 am i correct right right okay. yes yes so this is a relation i am asking whether this relation is an equivalence relation or not uh for it to be an equivalence relation for the points on the boundary you'll have to make them equivalent to themselves as well because right now you said that for any x square plus y for any point on the boundary you're only relating it to 1,0 but you also want it to be related to itself yeah right so uh can you just write down the relation fully once so any point x y it related to xy if x square plus y square is less than 1 and xy is related to um 10 if x square plus y square equals to 1 yeah this is the relation so as yeah as you told first of all it is reflexive or not so for example like is 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 related to 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 is it
uh, the way it's written right now, it will not be reflexive. Okay. So can you make it reflexive? Yes. Yeah. So what will be that? In the second condition, you also yeah. add x y related to x y. Okay. So you are telling this. So x y related to x y. But then one point you are telling to that is related to x y as well as one zero. But you see that okay. But you see that if x y is related to one zero, okay, that's right. Is this right. okay? Is this is so one zero should be related to x y? That should also be written, no? Yeah, that that's also right. Yeah, and then. Yeah, that's right. Then what after that? Yeah, please. Like uh, as I told, like this is just a uh, uh, like discussion session. So we'll just uh, discuss it and see if we can get it through somewhere. Yeah. So one zero is of course related to x y. Yeah. So yeah. So see, as you, as some of you told that this interior is fine, and this all the points should be related to themselves also. Okay. But but since all these points we are making related to one zero, and let's say I'll write one zero is related to one zero. So because that's clear with this, because one zero is related to one zero. And any point on the boundary is also related to one zero. So does that imply that any point is related to itself? So if I take any point x comma y, see if the square is less than one, then we are done. But if square is not less than one, that means the square is equals to one. Can I say that x y is related to x y with just these two data? If it is reflexive, then we are done. I mean, if yeah, yes, but we don't know right now. We just uh, one zero is going to x y, and yes. x y is zero, so x y will go to x y. So if symmetric, then it is obviously reflexive. So we need the uh, symmetric. Yes, we want just to be symmetric. Yeah, so this is symmetric anyway. Like, but but you see that this, uh, for example. In any equivalence relation, this is not true. For example, if I have the equivalence relation, and if suppose that I am given with uh, x is related to y and y is related to x, and the transitive, if these two are given, these two does not imply reflexive right. in general. Right. Okay. But here the thing is that here the structure that these two implies that you take any x y. That will be related to x y. Why? Because we have fixed a point one zero, okay. And with one zero, we are attaching to everyone. So x y is attached to one zero, and one zero is again attached to x y, and hence we have the relation. But we'll see a formalism again. So we'll see a formalism. But so you are yeah. assuming transitivity, or no? But transitivity is not clear. So if if you take any point. X Y, okay. See, if it is square is less than one, then we are not a problem because any point is related. So only problem is on the boundary point. So if X Y is on the boundary point, and let's say some other point, let's say A B is again a boundary point. So what we are doing, this is related to one zero, but anyway one zero is related to this, and I know that A B is also related to one zero. So I'm assuming, let's say for the time being, as, as, as you told. That I am assuming the transitivity relation also here. Although that we also that will also be proved with only these two conditions, we can prove everything. But for the time being, let's assume that the transitivity holds and the reflexive whatever you told, let's hold. Of course, as I told, with only these two, we'll able to prove that this is a this is an equivalence relation. But 
uh, since we have not formalized many things, so let's let's assume that that transitivity and reflexive hold. Then is it an equivalence relation? Yeah, is the equivalent? Is it then equivalence relation? Because symmetric holds reflexive and transitive. Let's say assume that. Then is it an equivalence relation? Yeah, if you have, uh, assume everything, then it is. Yeah, because like see, as I told, uh, with with the, with all will because see with the picture, it's uh, let me make it with picture. So what we are doing with anything on this, I'm 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 related to this point. Okay. So now, how do I prove that this point is itself related to this? Because any point on the boundary we are sending to to where to this point, okay? And inside we are sending to that uh, the same point. So now the thing is that I want to. So I have a map. So let me write with the D two with the D two tilde. So I have a map which sends x to. So I'll write this as D two union open disk union S one. Okay, sorry, not that. This way, I have this. I can write with D two union S one, and this I can write D two union point the open. Okay, so what I am doing, I am sending a map from. So I have, as I told, I have a map from this to this and this to this. Okay, so any point which is inside the disk. That will go to the inside, and any point on circle that will go to the star, and this is how we are defining the relation. Okay, but is this so? Now I want to make so this is a very natural map. So any any if you have okay so, okay so in, anyway I'll I'll just write here. So if I have any point like if I have any space X, and if I make some gluing on on some part of let's say I'll just make a picture, then it will be more clear. So if I have this X. And if I make some gluing along A, so this is my A. Okay, what I'm doing, I'm gluing the part A to one point. Then I have a map from this uh, x minus A union A to x tilde. I have a map. What? So any point on x minus A will go to x minus A, and any point on A will map to one fixed point. Okay. So I want to define a topology on. There it went. Yeah, I want to define a topology on this so that this map is continuous. So, can you give me at least one topology so that this map is continuous? Everybody know that some topology on which every map is continuous. So, can you give me a topology on this D two tilde so that this map is continuous? Indiscrete. Yes. So if I'll put the indiscrete topology here, so indiscrete topology means there are only two open sets, the set itself and the empty set. Okay, so these are the only two open sets. So if I'll put this topology on the disk, then what will happen is like this map is continuous. But the problem with this topology is, like, like you are not able to get the data of the disk. See, you remember that I first told that I my aim is to make A new spaces out of old space. Okay, so if I put just the indiscrete topology, then I I cannot like understand what exactly I am getting from the disk to the space, new space. Okay, so in other words, I want to like define a topology on this D two tilde so that my my map, the map that I defined, will be continuous as well as The second thing that I want that I should get more open sets. It means that, in other way, I want a topology on D two tilde so that this map is continuous and it should be the largest topology that you can define on that. Okay, so that is the two thing we want. We want our map. So let's let's now map. Let's write down the name of the map. So I have my x to Tilde. This is my pi. So I want two things: the pi to be continuous, and the second thing is pi to be continuous. And the second thing is that uh, 
so i want a topology and tau should be largest one okay so i want two things i want to define the tau in such a way that this pi is a continuous map and my tau is the largest topology so that it is continuous okay so what i will do like see when do we say that something is continuous if it pulls back an open set to an open set that is what we have just recalled that a map from a topological space to another topological space is called open if you take an open set and pull back in the domain you will be getting an open set so i'll just define my pi in such a way so i'll define pi sorry i'll define my tau as this is the pi inverse u is open so i'll take u so i'll take set some set c r i'll take this is my u so i'll say this is open if pi inverse u is in the tau x okay so with this definition this is pretty much clear that my pi is continuous but with this definition is it clear that it is the largest topology so can you uh, tell me that whether it's largest topology or not or first of all is it a topology we'll go whether it's largest or not first of all is it a topology so how do you check that this is a topology we need three things so first is the d2 tilde and open this empty set should be in tau is it there what is the pi inverse tilde yeah what is the pi inverse of d2 tilde d2 it's d2 and that's open and pi inverse of empty set is empty that's open so therefore these two are belong to tau okay the second thing if i take any u alpha belongs to tau i need to show that union of u alpha is in tau so that means i need to show that pi inverse union of u alpha belongs to tau x yeah but can you say why Uh, you can write uh, pi inverse of u u alpha is equal to u union of pi inverse of u alpha. Right. And the, uh, since uh, our union is open, so that's why this is open yeah. tau x. This is open and arbitrary union is open, and therefore this is in tau x. Yeah. Similarly, you have finite intersection. So if I take the finite intersection. I'll take U I, so I'll do that pi inverse U I. So again, I'll write this as intersection of pi inverse U I, and that's open. So this is a topology, okay? So at least, okay, we'll talk about the largest topology in a minute. But at least we got a topology on the right hand side, okay? Now we want to let's let's uh, see some open sets on this, on this. So. i want to see whether this is an open set so i just i so is this an open set what i'll do in in order to see is this an open set what i'll do how will i check that something in the tilde is an open set how will i check how will i check that in the right hand side something is open what i will do any guess take its inverse image under pi and see if that is yes. open yeah so i'll just take a inverse image here and see whether it's open here or not okay so see since uh on the white part of the disk that's an identity map so if i'll take any open set here okay that will be open here so it means that if i'll just take the image of this here that's open here so if it if it if the if the set on the right hand side does not contain this star point then i am fine because so if i take u inside d2 tilde okay and let's say u does not contains 
star sorry the point p then what is pi inverse of u this is u so u is open open in d2 tilde sorry if and only if u is open in d2 okay is this clear okay now i will take an open set which contains that point so can you give me a pre image what will be the pre image of that open that set not open set what will be the pre image of this set can you think of a pre image of that set boundary along with some part of a uh, matrix inside yeah so it will be precisely this so is it open in d2 is it open in d2 is it open in d2 so by d2 you mean the closed unit disk right yes 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 by d2 i mean that x y so yeah. that x is that will be open then yes that's open and why so 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 as like even level 1 participants know what is a subspace topology so so this is open because if i'll take because because this part is is basically inside that so i'll just do that okay so like we at least analyze what are the open sets in the disk example okay let's see what are the open sets in this uh, sir how do you know that uh, the pre image of that uh, blue open disk look looks like this okay so see of course uh, like see this is just the pictorial representation so see so let's go to the that picture where i have uh, yeah just one second here i can show you in a more yeah yes so you see that if i have this point so what i want i want to take sorry i want to consider this okay so is this like is this set the pink color set is it like this set is a is it containing this uh this point this contains this point okay but now you see that what happened if you are just if you are just going down if you are just going down what is happening this all are going here okay so and so how will i make it with pictorial so i'll, I'll just do it with here it is and, fine but uh, that there your codomain was different it was not sphere right yeah yeah so that so down. i don't know it's a sphere or not but that's yeah. why i'm i'm like i'm just making with pictures Okay. will prove it that all the things with the sphere and all so it's it's just a pictorial representation of open set nothing else okay we'll see what exactly we'll see whether that's a sphere or not now because now we have a topology on that so now we'll see whether that's homeomorphic to a sphere or not just like to see how the open sets look like on that i i have just like uh, illustrated that so nothing else so if that is clear then that is the main like motive of this picture nothing more fancy for example now here also now we can give a topology and now i want to ask, can you give me some open sets in this can you give me some open sets this so there are two kinds of again the open sets one is which does not contains this point and one which contains this point okay so if it does not contains then this point then it will be somewhere it will be something like this and if it contains that point then it will be like this and it will be like this okay is it clear okay so now let's let's formalize everything so i have an i have a topological spaces topological space and i define an equivalence relation on that okay and in the previous thing how do i how have defined equivalence relation 
like for example in the in this the equivalence relation was that 0 and 1 maps to it uh, like one point and this all the other points maps to itself on the this we have like this will go to one point and this will go to itself so that's an this is the equivalence relation that i have defined and now i consider the set of all equivalence classes of that equivalence relation so uh, let's see in this what are the equivalence classes so what is the equivalence class of zero here and what is the equivalence class of 0 0.5 and what is the equivalence class of 0 0.7 and equivalence class of 1. So what is the equivalence class of 0? Zero and one. Zero and one. And point five is open interval zero one. Open interval zero one. Okay, let's write that. Singleton zero point five, right? Uh, uh, there is some sound. Uh, yes. Yeah. Wh what you told? Singleton yes. zero point five. Singleton zero point five. Because see, I am telling that any point which is not either of zero and one, it should go to itself. So it is not. So it's this. Similarly, for zero point seven, it's zero point seven, and for one, it is again zero and one. So this is the precisely the so I'll write the equivalence class of x each either x or 0 1. So if x if x is not equals to 0 1 or x or this if x equals to 0 or 1 or 1. Okay. State x, right? Singleton x. Ah right, right. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Okay. So this is my equivalence class of x. Now, so I have, so this is what I am denoting it by, this is what you have denoted in the equivalence classes also. So this is my equivalence class, okay. Now, what is this map? As initially somebody told, that I'll just send x to its equivalence class, okay. This is my, and this we call as a quotient map. This map we call as a quotient map, okay. And then we say that this space is the quotient space, okay. Till now, no topology, just the quotient space. And now we are telling the topology that u in x mod tilde is open if and only pi inverse u is open in x. That is what we saw. And we also saw why do we want this kind of definition? Because the two things we want. One is that we want to make the quotient space into a topological space. But the second thing you recall that we haven't checked it yet, that I want a largest topology so that this map is continuous. So the largest is still, okay. And the largest is still, we have to prove. So we observe that the quotient topology is the largest topology on this so that the map is continuous. So can you prove it like why it is so? that the quotient topology is the largest topology on x mod tilde such that the map is continuous. So how do you prove that some topology is the largest topology? So you have like on x mod tilde, what I will do, I will take any topology tau. Okay. And I have pi. Okay. So I want to prove that for every u in tau, u must be in, sorry, pi. Sorry, not pi, pi, tau pi. This is what I want to show. Yes, how do you show that? Yes. If, if this is true, then I can say that this is the largest topology so that this pi is continuous. So how do you prove that? So if you take u in tau, how do you show that u is in tau pi? Anybody? Okay, so see, 
we we have this pi is continuous okay so we this okay and i have this with this okay i take an open set here u okay i know that with this topology this pi is continuous map so it means that what will happen pi inverse u will be open in x okay since pi inverse u is open in x so what does that mean this means what by the definition what does this mean u is open in where tau pi with the so it means that u belongs to tau pi so i started with any topology so that the pi is continuous and i saw that all open sets of tau is contained in tau pi so this proves that it is indeed the largest topology so that this happened okay fine yeah so yeah so yeah some of the topological properties we will be discussing maybe uh, i just because uh, some of you don't uh, like do not know uh, this the so how many of you don't know uh, for example compact sets connected set and path connected house draw how many of you don't know like the level 2 participants might be knowing this but uh, how many like like you can raise i guess raise hand facility is there so i guess you can raise hand also like right. i have done on matrix spaces but not on topology okay okay so at least on matrix space everybody is familiar with these topics not on hall drop let's say at least on metric space everybody is familiar with this th three so you must have seen okay so if x to y if f is continuous and if i take a compact set k then f of k is compact have you proved this or you can maybe this thing also you can discuss maybe this is discuss on 1.02 that the image uh, com compact set maps to a compact set under a continuous map and let me since you have done in uh, the metric spaces the definition would be same so i say that k inside x is compact i just recall if every open cover has a finite sub cover every open cover has a finite sub cover okay so this so if i so this is what even in metric spaces you have read that a set it's compact if you take any any open cover of that set you can get a finite sub cover then we say that that set is compact okay okay so let's for the time being let's uh, restrict to the compact this this thing we may discuss in the in the later discussions so okay so what so can you now say with the things that is written on the screen what do you, what can you say if x is compact what can you say about x mod tilde if x is compact what can you say about x mod tilde it's also compact why pi is continuous map yeah but uh, so we know that pi of x is continuous the pi of x will be compact but do you observe one more thing that this pi is what is the like what is this map pi like in terms of 
इंजेक्टिव सब्जेक्टिव इज अ सब्जेक्टिव मैम बिकॉज यू टेक एनी इक्वेलेंस क्लास दैट विल हैव अ प्री इमेज नेमली एटलीस्ट एक्स ओके सो दिस इज अ सब्जेक्टिव मैम so therefore this pi x is x not tilde and hence this is also compact okay so if x is compact then x not tilde is also compact okay so we will just cover uh, we will just consider this property and now we'll try to see so i'll just write down one theorem that we'll try to prove and this will be very important in order to see if if the quotient space is homeomorphic to some non spaces for example in 0 1 mod this it's same as circle so this is basically the homeomorphism so i'll just say a theorem so and we'll see the proof of this also so let's say if x and y are two topological spaces with x being compact or and y being hausdorff sorry compact and this is hausdorff oh so let me define hausdorff also so i'll say a, a topological space x is hausdorff if you take any two distinct points so if x1 not equals to x2 in x so for every x1 and x2 not equals to two distinct points there exist u and v such that x1 is contained in u x2 is contained in v and the intersection is empty so for example in r2 if i consider the two points let's say 1 0 and another point let's say 1.5 comma 0 then you see that i can have the two distinct points so if in r2 for any two points you can have such property so r2 is hausdorff so you can discuss that so let me write here this is maybe the discussion 1.03 that if xd is a metric space metric space then it is hausdorff so so every metric space is hausdorff okay so if you have a metric space then that's a hausdorff so this is your third uh discussion third problem for the discussion yeah so f from x to y where x is compact and y is hausdorff and let's say f is bijective if i assume f is bijective and f is continuous okay then if if i have this then f is a homeomorphism it means what since f is bijective so its inverse exists so f inverse exists and it is continuous okay so this is what so we have so if you have a compact space to a hausdorff space and if you have a bijective function between a compact space to a hausdorff space then we say that that continuous map is a homeomorphism so how do you prove this any idea of proving this okay how do you prove that so see f inverse exists so what do i need to prove that f inverse is continuous this is what i need to prove so we need to prove that f inverse is continuous so how do i prove that some map is continuous so f inverse is a map from y to x 
Okay. How do you prove that this is a continuous map? If it pulls back, open set to open set. If it pulls back, open set to open set. Or if it pulls back, a closed set to closed set also. Okay. Both are true. Means I can either take pulls back an open set to open set or pulls back a closed set to closed set. Okay. So this is also a discussion that you can try. That if f inverse of k is closed for every closed set, let's say f from x to y in y, then f is continuous. Okay, so if it Pulls back every closed set to a closed set, then also f is continuous. So this is again a discussion problem. Okay. So I I need to prove that f inverse is continuous. So what I'll do, I'll take a. Of course, you can do it with the open set, but with the closed set, this is quite easy because we have a compact set here. So if I'll take, so this is my x and this is my y, and this is my f inverse. So what I'll do, I'll take a closed set here. K. So what is f inverse of k? Sorry, f inverse of inverse. Now, yeah, yeah. What is this? Is this closed? Yes. Yeah. Compact. F inverse is continuous, and F inverse k is also compact to y. Right. So let's let's write here whatever you told. Uh, there were a lot of noise. So yeah. So k is compact. Sorry, k is closed, and k is a subset of a compact set. So this implies k is compact. Okay. And k is compact, and what is f inverse of f is a bijective function. So what is this? This means f of k. Okay. But a continuous map f is continuous, so f of k will be again compact. And a compact set inside a Hausdorff set is closed, so this will be closed. So here basically I have told three or four things. So let me write it somewhere. Okay, so I'll just write it here. Okay, so the first thing is that any closed subset of a compact set is closed. Again, these all are for your discussion session that you can try, and uh, a compact. Subset of a host of space is closed. Okay, so again, these two are for the this. So what we have proved that if you have a bijective function between a compact space to a host of space, then that continuous function is a homeomorphism, and this is a very important result. Okay, so uh, till now it is clear. So we'll go to the. So should I stop here or should I go to the mapping property? What do you suggest, Tamogna? I guess uh, it will be better if they will just go through everything and then we can discuss the this mapping properties and all. Or should I continue this mapping property? Uh, Rito Prabhu. So, what do you suggest? Should I continue or uh, or let or let me ask to the maybe to the participants? 
तो वॉट डू यू वॉन्ट Yeah, that's one. Okay. No, uh, no. Like these are now the main thing because this will be helpful to uh, say homeomorphism when we have homeomorphism. Yeah. 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 okay okay yeah that also i can do yes okay so you see that what we have observed that 0 1 and 0 1 mod tilde so what is this our observation say that this should be a circle okay so i want to prove that this space is a circle so how do we prove that something is a homeomorphism so as i told that in order to prove something is a homeomorphism we need to prove two things that there are two continuous function one from x to y and one from y to x and the second thing is that their corresponding uh, composition will be identical so if i want to prove that this is same as circle i need to find a continuous map from this a continuous map from this so that okay f sorry g so that f is continuous g is continuous and f compose g is identity and g compose f is identity then i can say that uh, if i'll join the two end points of this that's topologically a circle okay so so this theorem will be helpful for that okay so what it says that if you have a topological spaces two topological spaces x and y so let's write here so in our case x is my 0 1 and y is circle okay and let f is a continuous map between this to this okay x to or let me go to the final thing yeah so x to y so x is my 0 1 and y is my circle okay and if i have a continuous map uh between that these two spaces and if i consider the e an equivalence relation given on x such that f preserves the equivalence relation that means any two points which are related that will map to the same point under f so if x1 is related to x2 this will imply that f of x1 should be equals to f of x2 if this happens under this map then there exists a continuous map between this so that this diagram is commutative that means uh that means what that f equals to this f equals to g composed pi okay so this is the so the, in this way you see that we know that when this function is continuous that a function from x mod tilde to y when this function is continuous so can you give me so i'll just so if i have so can you give me a map from x mod tilde to y a very natural map okay or or it's better if you discuss the proof as suggested so i'll i'll leave the proof for a discussion so discussion okay so we'll see in the discussion session so let's let's discuss this example and then we'll stop so x is my 0 1 and the relation that i have defined is x is 0 and or x y is in 0 1 and i want to describe what is x mod tilde okay so what is your guess what is x mod tilde here yeah? what will be x mod tilde here s1 s1 so let's take 0 1 i'll send to s1 okay and i want to prove that this thing is a this two are spaces are homeomorphic okay so 
Uh, let's make it slightly. Yes. Yeah. So, what I will. So, can you give me a continuous map from zero one to S one? So let's say this is f. This is pi. So, can you give me a continuous map from zero one to S one? Do you have a map from closed interval zero one to circle? Ah, uh, may I? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, like uh, f of x is equals to <coughs> cos two pi x, comma sine two pi x. This is a map which goes to circle, and why it is continuous map? Uh, since uh, cos two pi x, sine two pi x are continuous functions, yes, so that's why this map is continuous. So x maps to cosine two pi x, and x maps to sine two pi x. Since these two are continuous, so this implies that f will be continuous. Okay, yeah. Now, so I got a continuous map. Now let's go back to the theorem. So f from x to y continuous map, and if you have an equivalence relation, and f preserves the equivalence relation. So, see what what is f of zero under this map? It's cosine two pi zero. That's one and zero. So one zero. And what is f of one? That's again one zero. So zero and one were identified, and on this point they are equal. So f of zero equals to f of one. So this means that I will get a continuous map from this to this. Okay. So this g will be continuous. Now, is it a bijective function? Is g bijective? So it means that I, I want to show that it's a injective, it's a surjective, and everything. So once you prove the theorem, then you'll see that this G will be bijective. I leave this also. We'll discuss this also. This is just one line argument. So I leave this to you to discuss. So I'll just discuss something. Okay, so G is bijective. Now, is this compact? This is compact. Pi is continuous, so this will be compact. Is S one Hausdorff? So this also you check that S one is Hausdorff. These are all the things you have studied. So I'm just uh, there are lots of discussion exercises, but most of the things you have learned already. So you have a, a bijective continuous map from a compact set to Hausdorff space, and hence this G is a homeomorphism. So this proves that this is nothing but the circle. Okay. So I'll stop here. So if you have any doubt, you can ask. So any doubt? Hello. Yeah. Uh, in this example, that even map f is surjective, right? I mean, uh, uh, this map is surjective that Abhinash gave. Yes. But in general, we want that uh, the map to be surjective. Right? Uh, no, here we don't want anything about the surjective and all. In this theorem, we don't want anything. Of course, this this result. Will work only if f is surjective. Then only I can say g is surjective. But in general, this theorem we don't want. Then, if it is not surjective, then we'll say that, like for example, if let's say f of x will be here, image. If x is there, I'll just consider f of x, and then I'll just consider my x mod tilde. And if again, if If x is compact, this is compact. If this is Hausdorff, then I'll just say these two are homeomorphic. 
but this need not be subjective in general. But here it is subjective. Can you go So this map G will be a homeomorphism from X tilde to uh, F of X, right? No, in this theorem, this is not a homeomorphism. This is just a continuous map. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. This is just a continuous function. And how, and how do you get it? So, uh, see. So, how do you define or how, how do you prove this? Let's let's go into that because that's important so see let's go to this example and this is my equivalence relation okay so see this so i'll just write here equivalence relations so this set is zero and this is one equivalence relation union, the set X, X is greater than zero, less than one. Okay, these are the equivalence classes of this. Okay, so see, if this is a map from here to here, then for every point, for every point, I have an image here. Okay, for every point, I have an image here. So x maps to f of x but this x will also map to its equivalence class so what is the natural map from this to this that i'll send this equivalence class to f of x okay that's a very natural choice that you take any equivalence class in this and send to the f of x Okay, that's a natural choice. But what are the things that you need to check here? The first is, since we are defining a map on the equivalence classes, so we need to check G is well defined. That means if I take two equal equivalence classes, for example, in this case, if I'll take F of zero, sorry, G of zero and G of one should be same. But why it will be same? Because it is given that this, that any two points which are related, then they will be same. I know that if X and Y are same, this means that X and Y are related. So this means that F of X equals to F of Y, but this means G of class X equals to G of class Y. And that will prove that this function is well defined. Okay. And now you need to just see that why it is continuous. So that I leave for you to discuss on. So that that's again a very easy thing. So how do you prove that something is continuous? You take some open set here and prove that the previous the inverse image is continuous. Okay. Yeah, any other? 